Good day to you out there. This is the second part of my lecture on uh, mold concept. This time around, we are dealing with mold concept in terms of Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is a constant, which is given as 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 per mole. What does this mean? It means that one mole of any substance, be it a compound, be it an atom, be it an element, anything, be it an ion, one mole is always equivalent. One mole of any substance is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Number of particles. Particles. Yes. Now, Avogadro's number is expressed in particles. The particles can be in any form. It could be atoms, ions, um, electrons, protons. It can be any particle. But one thing that remains unchanged is one mole of any substance has this number of particles. Now, the example questions we have on the board, we have like four of them, is covering most part of this thing. So let's go and see how we can apply or how we can find solutions to questions relating more concept to Avogadro's number. If you like this class, if you like this video, please, after watching this, subscribe, share, and press the like button. Thank you. So let's go on and solve this problem. Now, on to question one. We want to calculate the number of particles present in 0.2 mole of lead chloride. Now, since we are given mole, and we are finding the number of particles, that means the number of particles will be found using Avogadro's constant. So, we don't have anything to do with the relative molecular mass in this case, because we are given this in terms of mole, and we are finding the number of particles which comes with the Avogadro's constant. So, what do I do? One mole of uh, lead chloride contains 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 particles. So what do now 0.2 mole contain? It is obvious that 0.2 mole will contain lesser number of particles because 0.2 is less than 1. But let's do the mathematics. Let me say X particle. X particles. Now, so just put your division line here. Put your division line here. That means mole over mole equivalent to particles over particles. Then cross multiply. When you cross multiply and you make X the subject, X will be 0.2 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. By, by the time you do your calculation very well, let's see what it's going to give us. Just multiply 0 0.2 by 6.02. Why you leave these uh, indices? 0 0.2 times 6.02. That is 1.204. 1.204 times 10 to the power 23 particles. So, that's the answer to this question. Number one. Let's move on to question two. Question two says, calculate the number of ions present in 0.5 mole of copper 2 
iron. You can see this is in terms of iron now. Since you are finding number of ions, it means the Avogadro's constant number will be 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 ions to one mole. So, number two, one mole of copper 2 ion is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 ions. So, we are given 0 0.5 mole, which is obviously lesser than 1 mole. That means it's, got, it's not going to be up to this value, but let's say 1 ions. Let's say 0 0.5 mole that we are looking for the number of ions in it contains y ion. So y represents the number of ions we are looking for. So put your division line here. Put your division line here. But ensure that mole is standing over mole, ion is standing over ion. So when you cross multiply, what do you have? Y will now be 0 0.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 ions. And since 0 0.5 is half of it, that will be 3.01 times 10 to the power 23 aeons. So that's the answer to question 2. Let's move on to question 3. Question 3 is all about finding the number of atoms present. You can see number of atoms. That means this time around, the particles in the Avogadro's number is atoms present in 17 grams of ammonia gas. Now, look at this. 17 grams of ammonia gas. So since we are given grams of ammonia gas, that means we have to find the relative molecular mass of ammonia gas. Why? That's question three. One mole of ammonia gas is equivalent to its relative molecular mass. Please, let's take note of that. One mole of any substance is equivalent to its relative molecular mass. Alright, that means one mole of ammonia gas will be converted to molecular mass. That will be 14 for nitrogen plus 1 times 3 for hydrogen because hydrogen has substrate 3 and atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. So that will give me what? 17. You can see that 1 mole of uh, ammonia gas is 17. So, and we know that 1 mole of any substance in terms of Avogadro is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms, since it's number of atoms we are looking for in this case. And luckily, the number of uh, uh, the grams given in the question is also 17 grams. That means, therefore, 17 grams of ammonia will be equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. So that's our answer. Because 17 grams are given in the question. So it's, you can see it's direct now. But supposing it's not 17 grams we are given in the question. So we'll do it the way we do this. We place it under each other. Alright. Lastly, let's have a look at the last question. The last question, which is question 4, says calculate the number of grams present in, now, in 1.505 times 10 to the power 22 aeons of hydroxide aeon. Hydroxide aeon is OH negative. Alright, so what do we do? Since we are looking for grams, that means we have to deal with molecular mass of hydroxide ion. 
So, one mole of hydroxide ion is equivalent to its relative molecular mass. You know, I said it here that one mole of any substance is equivalent to its relative molecular mass or relative atomic mass. Either it's an element or a compound, it depends. All right, now, so that means definitely one mole of uh, hydroxide ion will be equivalent to 16 for oxygen plus 1 for hydrogen, which is uh, 17 grams. So, since one mole is 17 grams, definitely it is correct to say 17 grams of hydroxide ion contains 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 ions in terms of Avogadro's number. Why did I say this? Because I'm looking for grams in this. So I have to use grams with equivalent to number of ions. All right. Having done that, the last part will now be... Okay, let me... Okay, that means... Let's, um, let's say um, X grams of uh, hydroxide ion is what we are going to see in 1.505. 1.505 times 10 to the power 22 ions. You can see that grams over grams, ions over ions. So put division line, put division line. Then cross multiply and make x the subject. So x will be 17 times 1.505 times 10 to the power 22, all divided by 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. If you do your calculation very well, if I were you, I will deal with this one first. 17 times 1.05. 17 times 1.0. Sorry. 17 times 1.505. Divided by 6.02. That will give me 4.25. Then times, since these are indices, so 23, according to mathematics, 23 could goes up, it becomes negative. That will be times 10 raised to the power 22 minus 23. That will be 4.25 times 10 raised to the power minus 1, which is 0 0.425 grams. Chef Rene. That is all about that. If you love this video, if you, if, if you find it very interesting, Please subscribe to my channel. Then you can have access to any new video released as soon as it is released. Like the button as well and share it. See you again for the last part of more concept, which has to do with more concept in terms of molar volumes. It's going to be very interesting and also the application of it. Thank you.